The topic for this presentation is about personal identification. This lesson will not only talk about fingerprint identification and fingerprint classification, but any scientific methods of identification. Personal identification means establishment of individuality of a person. It could be either complete identity and incomplete identity. Complete identity includes his name and as well as his address. While when we say incomplete identity, it only includes the age, sex, and only partial information. The first thing that we must know in the uh, rules of identification is the law of multiplicity of evidence. The greater the points of similarities in similarities of two persons compared, the greater is the probability the conclusion to be correct. The value of the different points of identification varies in the formulation of a conclusion. The longer the interval between the death and the examination of the remains or the human remains for purpose of identification, the greater is the need for experts to establish identity. And as much as the object to be identified is highly perishable, such as the Latin prints, the semens, and the blood spatters, it is necessary for the team to act the shortest possible time. One of the scientific methods of identification is the anthropometry. It is the first scientific method that was used in, by the police officers or the law enforcers in the identification. Anthropometry is the systematic measurement of the physical properties of the human body. Measurement like eye height, the distance from the floor to a person's eyes, can be taken sitting or standing. Other measurements include elbow height, hip breadth, overall stature, knuckle height, and popliteal height, or the distance from the floor to the back of the knee. However, this method of identification becomes not accurate because there was one case showing two different persons have almost the same with the measurements. This is the Wills case. This mugshots and fingerprints of uh, Will and William West. In 1903, newly convicted criminal Will West was taken to the Leavenworth Penitentiary and processed for Bertillon measurements. The record keeper thought he was another registered inmate, leading to the realization of a major flaw in anthropometry. From the uh, Bertillon measurements thus obtained, the record keeper went to the file and returned with the card the measurements called for, properly filled out, and bearing the name William West. 
This card was shown to the prisoner who grinned in amazement and said, That's my picture, but I don't know where you got it, for I know I have never been here before. The record clerk turned the card over and read the particulars there given, including the statements that this man was already a prisoner at the same institution, having been committed to a life sentence on September 9, 1901 for the crime of murder, which were stated by Harris Hawthorne Wilder and Bert Whitworth in 1918. It, it disclosed in the measurements that some of the measurements, they have the same measurements, but some are not, but they are closely uh, with the same measurements. A Will West is, he has a 178.5, while William West has a 177.5. Will West has 187.0, while William West has 188.0. Although, the Bertillon measurements of the West were nearly indistinguishable. The two men's fingerprints revealed profound differences, exhibiting fingerprinting validity. Despite the similarity of appearance of names and of their Bertillon measurements, the fingerprints of Will West and William West were completely different. It was disclosed, disclosed that in the fingerprint analysis of Will has he has an inside world of 11 ridges while William has invaded loop with 18 ridges. I will give you analyzation. Just determine or know who is this person. This person, after it has been analyzed, looking at on the, or comparing with the forehead, eyes, everything, then it appears or it is close that this person is closely the same with this man named Marlon Wanki. Let us just talk about the overview of forensic anthropology. Who is a forensic anthropologist? A forensic anthropologist analyzes skeletal remains to determine the identity of a victim as well as his or her life history, cause of death, or other clues about a crime. There are main characteristics of forensic anthropology. First is sex. It determined by examining the skull, pelvis, humerus, and femur. Let us talk about the pelvis to determine whether it is whether it is male or female. Women give birth for this reason the pelvis of a woman is larger than the pelvis of a man. The pelvis of a woman is wide and circular, whereas the pelvis of a man is narrow and heart shaped. In men, the diameter of the head of the femur is larger than 55 mm. In women, the diameter of the head of femur is less than 45 mm. Second is the age and stature. Talks about the height or even the build of the person's body structure. It determined by analyzing the development of the teeth, bone growth, cranial suture lines, and the length of specific bones, such as the femur. When a baby is born, the skull is still growing. To accommodate this growth, the different bones of the skull are separate. By the age seven, all different bones have finished growing and the fontanelles have disappeared. Next is the race. It determines 
by analyzing the skull for characteristics that are common among people of different races. The skull is the only reliable bone to determine race of a recovered skeleton. It is not possible to narrow down the identification to race, Caucasians, Negroid or the Mongolite. Another method of identification is the portrait parley. It is a French term referring to a picture of a suspect in both front and profile views. We still use front and profile views, but we have added in written descriptions of the suspect as well. We use portrait parles for finding suspect and missing persons because of the thoroughness of the description. Of course, that is how, how I make or I draw a person, but of course that is not how it looks like. The portrait parley actually includes the following description of the features, color of hair on the scalp, beard, mustache, and other parts of the body, color of the iris of the eye, description of any body peculiarities, and description of any characteristic marks on the body, such as scars or tattoo marks, and likewise it also includes here in the photographs. Another method or scientific method of identification is the fingerprint analysis. The pattern of the print is present before birth from the fourth month of pregnancy approximately and remains constant during the whole life of the person. A person's fingerprints are formed when they are a tiny developing baby in their mother's womb. Pressure on the fingers from the baby touching and the surroundings create what are called friction ridges that faint lines you see on your fingers and toes. The fingerprints will not disappear except after operation or after the application of caustic to them. In such cases, there will be a scar which is still a point of identification. After that, in peeling of the superficial layers of the skin, as a result of putrefaction, the deeper skin layers will still carry the characteristics of the print. Personal identification by dactylography is useful only when there is a previous recourse for these prints to be used for comparison. What is fingerprint? It is an impression or mark made on a surface by person's fingertip. It is found on fingers, palms, toes, soles of feet. It is composed of ridges, which we call it as heels, and follows the valleys. You can see it on the presentation where we can find the ridges, the color of the ridges appearing black while valleys, the color appearing white. Is dactyloscopy same as the fingerprint? Fingerprint is a unique natural pattern of ridges on the tips of the fingers. Fingerprints are the production of friction skin ridges found on the palm side of the fingers and as well as the uh, on the thumbs while dactyloscopy is the forensic analysis and comparison of fingerprints as a means of identification of individuals we have here questions what is the tiny elevations or hill like structure containing sweat pores which is color black on ink fingerprint a. Depression. B. Ridges. C. Aptras. D. Foros. Another question is the What is the principle underlying the science of fingerprint which states that the fingerprint cannot lie? A. Conclusive principle. 
B, principle of permanency. C, principle of infallibility. D, principle of individuality. Before we can answer the questions, we must know. Fingerprint principles. Fingerprints are a reproduction of friction skin ridges found on the palm side of the fingers and thumbs. The first principle is friction ridges develop their unique form in the fetus. As I already mentioned, at approximately three to five months, a person's fingerprints are formed when they are tiny, developing baby in their mother's womb. It is believed that no two fingerprints look alike. It is classified by ridge patterns. If two fingerprints are matched, the ridge patterns must be identical in both characteristics and location on the finger. The second, the second principle, a fingerprint will remain largely unchanged during an individual's lifetime. No matter how you try to remove the outer layer of the skin of your finger, the ridges will still restore. There was this man who tried to remove his ridges. He is a notorious gangster and a police character attempted to erase his fingerprint by burning with acid, but as time went by, the ridges were again restored to its natural feature. This person is no other than John Dillinger. The third principle is the friction ridge patterns and their details are unique. This is the principle of infallibility. No two fingers have yet been found to possess identic identical ridge characteristics, even identical twins. That is why it is accurate for identification. The fourth principle, fingerprints can be systematically classified by general ridge patterns. You can watch it on my previous discussion pertaining fingerprint classification. There are allied sciences of fingerprints. First is the poroscopy. Science which deals with the study of pores found on the papillary or friction ridges of the skin for the purpose of identification. The father of poroscopy is no other than Dr. Edmond Locard. Another allied sciences of fingerprint is the chiroscopy, the science of palm print identification. The father of chiroscopy is William J. Herschel. Chiroscopy is useful in the field of criminal investigation. Latin impression of this area or area of the palm is usually found on objects such as beer bottles, pipes used as weapons. Latin impressions of this area is common also on questioned documents of paper or paper involved in handwriting. For Latin impression investigation, this may appear on window seals and counter or table tops when the suspect requires support for climbing. Next is the odoscopy. It is the science of footprint identity. Another scientific method of identification is the dental identification. It is the use of the unique characteristics of a person's teeth or dental work as recorded in dental charts, radiographs, and records to establish the person's identity. There are several methods for using dentistry to identify a person. First, a forensic Dentists can extract DNA from the pulp chamber to cross-match and identify a victim. 
Second, investigators can examine dental records to match them to a corpse or to match a bite mark to a perpetrator. The more recent the anti-mortem records of the person to be identified, the more reliable the comparative mode of identification can be done. The possibility of two persons to have the same dentation is quite remote. A forensic dentist can utilize amyloglyphics or enamel rod patterns. The enamel of the teeth is the hardest substance of the body. It may outlast all other issues during putrefaction. Like fingerprints, these are unique to each individual. Unlike fingerprints, they are highly resistant and cannot be intentionally burned or cut to change the pattern. Similar to collecting fingerprints, investigators take enamel rod prints. Next is dental experts can identify people using amylogenin geni. This geni is extracted from the pulp of a tooth and then analyzed using a polymerase chain reaction to determine the sex of the victim. Blood is often unavailable in the examination of deceased victims, but teeth and bones provide accurate DNA access. The mandibular bone is another excellent source for DNA analysis. It's easily accessible and removable and provides accurate identification of a person's age and sex. More recently, forensic dentists have begun to use radiographic tooth and jaw identification. Radiographs taken post-mortem are compared to radiographs taken while the victim was alive. However, it is important to note that dental restorations may leave artifacts on radiographs which can threaten the reliability of this method. Ultraviolet lights can help differentiate between virgin tooth structure and restorations. The mandibular ramus and a mustard process can be used to determine someone's sex while the eruption status of teeth can be used to determine age. In fact, this is an even more accurate way of determining age than examining the skeleton. Basing on the following can able to determine the age of a person. The, pers the person is a nine year old when he has 12 permanent teeth, eight incisors and four molars. 11 year old when he has a 20 permanent teeth, 8 incisors, 8 premolar and 4 molars. 13 year old if he has 28 permanent teeth and no deciduous teeth. 8 to 10 year old when he has a calcification begin at the third molars and 25 year old when he has a root ends of the third molars are completely calcified. How to determine the age of the fetus? This is how we determine the age of the fetus. We can use the Hassis rule. For the fetus not less than 25 centimeter long, get the square root of the length in centimeter and the result is the age of the fetus in month. A good example, if the fetus has a measurement of 16 centimeter, the square root of 16 centimeter is 4. So therefore, the age of the fetus is four months. For fetus, 25 centimeters or more, divide the length of the fetus by five and the result is the age in months. If the measurement of the fetus is 30 centimeters, then you divide it by five, then the answer is six. Thereby, the age of the fetus is six months. 
Another scientific method of identification is the iris recognition. Iris recognition is an automated method of biometric identification that uses mathematical pattern recognition techniques on video images of one or both of the irises of an individual's eyes. Post complex patterns are unique, stable, and can be seen from some distance. Using also of this method can help the law enforcers to identify the true identity of the person. Next is the photography. The photography was already been discussed in the previous discussion. You can visit our YouTube channel by clicking this link. Another method of identification is the gait analysis. It is the systematic study of animal locomotion, more specifically the study of human motion using the eye and the brain of observers augmented by instrumentation for measuring body movements, body mechanics, and the activity of the muscles. Look at those who are in the field of law enforcement agencies. Most likely you can observe the way how they walk or the manner how they walk. So you can actually determine or you can presume that the person is a member of the military or any other law enforcement agencies. Gait analysis involves a frame by frame examination of a person's body when they are moving to identify a pattern called gait signature. To generate this signature, analysis take into account the person's posture, length of strides, movement of hands, head tilt, distribution of weight and angle of feet during movement. Analysis compare the walking pattern of the culprit from the CCTV recording with that of the suspect captured later. Then forensic serology. Forensic serology is the detection, identification, classification, and a study of various bodily fluids such as blood, semen, saliva, urine, breast milk, vomit, fecal matter, and perspiration in their relationship to a crime scene. At the crime scene, it is important to establish the type, origin, and other characteristics of the blood or blood stain. Preliminary investigations in this regard are to confirm whether the recovered fluid is blood and whether its origin is human. Once the human origin of the blood or blood stain is confirmed, further analysis is done to establish other characteristics. The blood stain is initially subjected to blood typing. And there are also other scientific methods of identification that were not yet tackled, but it will be tackled once you will enroll this course.